neighbor across over here came by one day after the, the windows were installed and said, could I ask you a favor? He said, sure. He said, could you not put anything on the windows because I can see the lake through your windows. That's how clear and big they were. So we're happy that he's happy. And we'll, we'll probably keep it as open like as possible for the longest time. Uh, so we have the school building that we acquired here also miraculously. For those who don't know the full story, I'll just briefly tell you that it was basically owned by a previous owner who decided to liquidate his, some of his assets and it went to a silent auction. And many developers were uh, definitely planning to bid on it because it's right on the lake. And so we said, well, we hope that we can, by the grace of God, acquire it because one day this church has to expand. Right now it seats about 400 people in here and about 200 people in the social hall. That's why we put the tent up for security so that in case there are too many people here, the tent will accommodate everybody else. So we really pray to be able to acquire the school. And the school we acquired by a miracle also because we just put an offer and sure enough, the offer was accepted. And the church was able to apply the school building across the street where the cars are parked. One of the interesting stories I'll tell you about that is one day we were asking a contractor to come in right after, right after we had won the bid to take a look and see what we're going to do because we had discovered there was asbestos that we, need, we needed to remove, which we removed. We discovered mold, which we needed to remove. There was a lot of stuff that had to be gutted out completely. So a lot of work had to go in. So that contractor came in representing a very, very big contracting company in Montreal. He was a friend of a name of a friend. So he said, yeah, I'll take a look and tell you what I think. When he came in, he looked around and said, well, there's definitely some potential here, but it's a lot of work. And then he turned to the school building and said, you know, that building was up for sale. And we really wanted it. And we put an offer on all of the owner's assets, hoping to win the whole package one shot. But for some reason, we lost the bid on the school building. So I told him, well, to be honest, we're the ones who won the bid. So he looked at me and he opened his eyes, you? I said, yes, not me, but the church. So he said, I'm really happy for the first time to lose a bid because I'm hoping and I wish for that your church will expand and grow in the future. special dates to remember with May 9th and 10th. And that's one of the reasons why we pushed to be able to open up officially on May 9th, is that May 9th in the Coptic calendar is actually the birthday of St. Mary, the mother of Jesus in the Coptic calendar. So we figured what a beautiful occasion to celebrate the opening of the church on her nativity. Also, as you know, tomorrow is Mother's Day. So Mother's Day is a special occasion for all of us. And St. Mary is our mother, we consider our mother. And the church also is considered our mother. So any ladies who are here are considered our mothers as well and, and are an inspiration role models. So again, more to celebrate. But something else about May 10th that's very special is that on May 10th, 1959, Pope Rodos VI was a known patriarch for the Sea of St. Mark. Pope Rodos is two popes ago. Currently we have our holy, as long as Pope Rogers II, previously the thrice blessed Pope Shadun the Third, and right before that, Pope Rodos VI. Pope Rodos VI is very interesting to commemorate on the church opening because on May, he being Pope at the time, he was the first teacher to send out a priest outside of Egypt to go serve in Montreal. And I want to talk about that priest in a moment. So he sent out the first priest to Montreal for the first copy of the church, and the blessing continues. So there's a lot to thank God for the celebrate. That brings me to a special verse that really, you know, uh, strikes the chord with me personally. And I'm going to share it with you from the, the Gospel of St. John, the story of the Samaritan woman, when our Lord Jesus Christ went all the way to the land of Sikar to that Samaritan woman to a winner and save her. Now, the verse that I'm going to fast forward to the verse that really matters to us today, says, 
For in this the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. So I really feel this verse applies because many people have labored way before I was even born. And we have entered into their labors. So I'm going to talk about, because of that, I'm going to talk about Montreal's finest. Or three of Montreal's finest. I think Montreal's finest is Montreal Police, of course. I have great respect for the Montreal Police. Even my brother-in-law is a Montreal Police officer. But I'm not talking about the Montreal Police. I'm talking about three of Montreal's finest laborers in the vineyard or in the kingdom of God. So the first person I kind of alluded to a moment ago is this father over there, thinking the father, Rafael Benetta. So as I was mentioning, Pope Bruno's VI, who commemorated his throne and anniversary tomorrow, sent the first priest to Montreal in 1967 to begin. Now when Father Rafael came to Montreal, it was like the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He didn't know who was Egyptian, who wasn't, where to start a church, where to begin to pray. And he used to take the phone book back then and go through all the names that seemed more or less Middle Eastern and call them up, say, I'm so-and-so, I'm from this church, I'd like to welcome you to the service. Would you like to attend? Of course, some people slammed the phone in his face. Some people said, oh, interesting, okay, maybe I'll come. But he started one person at a time, one name at a time. The picture on the left there, you can see him on the top right corner, and below is the Christ Blessed Pope, Romans the Sixth, the Pope that ordained him a priest to come to Montreal in 1967. So that's one of Montreal's finest up there. Next person I want to talk about being Montreal, one of Montreal's 